Hi, and welcome to this first Open Dev Talk. Um, I'm Kevin. I'm the CTO and one of the founders of High Mobility. And today I'll walk you through some of the steps you need to do to get started with the connected car data. So we will have a pretty fast pace. Uh, we'll go through the different kind of first things to think about when starting to work with uh, well connected car data uh, and how you use the High Mobility platform to do that. Very briefly about High Mobility, you might be one of our customers already. You might be testing our platform out. If not, uh, uh, just to explain, we are a data platform for vehicle-specific data. That means that through us, it's possible to use one API uh, to, to access remote functionality or vehicle data from a lot of vehicles and to get help with getting the driver consent uh, and agreement to start accessing that and to offer services to uh, customers who own connected cars. So one of the first things I will show you is I will share my screen um, and get into the High Mobility to our platform at High Mobility uh, and show you the kind of basic steps really from the beginning uh, to start accessing data uh, from live vehicles. Let me go ahead and share my screen uh, to walk you through that. Here we go. Okay, so right now I'm showing you um, the um, car, kind of car data terms of use. So not the most exciting things to uh, start with, but nevertheless uh, important to see because uh, first off, um, to start activating kind of real vehicles uh, to fetch data from them. Uh, there are, of course, certain agreements that have to be done, uh, specifically the different manufacturers who are open, uh, have open APIs, they, they require these terms to be signed. Uh, so that's always one of the first things to check out. There's nothing really um, um, major in those terms. It's more or less kind of says uh, what type of things have to be achieved in terms of data protection, uh, privacy regulations and so on to start accessing data. Uh, what's worth to mention is that there are different terms of use uh, depending on different markets or if you're offering services to uh, private owners of vehicles or if it's to kind of different fleet owners, so it's a fleet of vehicles or if you yourself have a fleet of vehicles and you want to access your own data. Uh, so we are always happy to help. We have different kind of templates for all of those things, basic T's and C's on our website. Uh, that you can already check out. They're also linked in the description. Uh, so that's one of the prerequisites to kind of start, get going with uh, live data. The second thing is um, the question about what type of vehicles are eligible. So what can you actually work with? So if I go here to the second tab, I have here our documentation up and running. So docs.timeobility.com, uh, open documentation. You can access it without any type of registration that is needed. And in here, we have a bunch of information about how to use the platform, but also about different types of manufacturers that we support today. We continuously add support for new manufacturers and what type of models that are eligible. So if I would go here into uh, the different guides, for instance, I can go into the Mercedes-Benz guide. I can see then scroll down what type of vehicles are eligible. So here we go. We have different A-class, B-class, C-class, and we also have the manufacturing year for when the vehicles were produced and if they're eligible, so they have a built-in um, modem into the vehicle that provides uh, 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 live data. And you can see here for Mercedes-Benz, we have most models since 2016, 2017 that are supported. So a lot of kind of, uh, well, many years back, and we have the same type of breakdown for all different brands here on the left-hand side, so all the Stellantis brand, Porsche, uh, Ford, BMW, and so on. Another thing to mention is that we're also always happy to do individual lookups. So uh, if you have already a customer base and you want to see how what portion of those uh, have connectivity and can be used to get data directly without any need for additional hardware, uh, you can uh, always get in touch with us. Um, and as soon as we kind of enter, um, um, enter a discussion, you can also share a list of VINs. So that's the vehicle identification number with us and we were able to do a lookup to say, yes, that these vehicles are eligible, uh, so you know what to plan with. Because, of course, you want to have an overview of what vehicles um, are connectable before uh, starting to do an integration and start using that data. So once you have that, uh, that overview, uh, it makes sense to go into the platform. So uh, that's, you can simply done it, do it on highmobility.com, create an account. You just need to enter your email, your name, uh, enter a password, create an account, nothing more than that. And then you get into the platform where you will be able to get, start managing the access to the data. So I've already signed in. You can see here my name up in the right corner. 
uh, have here. This is the first kind of landing page you will see if you get into the platform and where you can get started. We have two different tabs. We have one called build, one called live data. So to access real vehicles, you would go into live data. In the build section, we have information about uh, the SDKs, the different APIs we support today, and also a simulation studio, which you can use um, to simulate different data through our car simulator. That's a big topic of its own. Uh, so it's basically a sandbox environment where you can try out and, and simulate the data. But uh, for this focus of this today, Dev Talk, we'll just look at the uh, live data uh, section. Once you're in the live data section, you can go ahead and uh, see your data containers. So I have a bunch of test containers here already. And um, with these test containers, I basically I'm, I'm trying out different things. But what you would have to do once you have kind of access to the platform, you go in here to live data, you create a new container. So it says create a new app. Uh, you choose the way you want to consume the data. So you, if it's uh, from an iOS Android app, so it's more consumer focused, or if it's a cloud integration, as in most cases, for instance, for fleet data, you would probably integrate the data into your cloud. So I would go ahead and choose that. Um, and so like, okay, this is my cloud um, environment. Create that container. And as soon as I do that, I get prompted here. I see I have a unique app ID and I would go ahead and choose the different permissions uh, that I'm interested in. So by choosing um, different permissions, that's basically the data points your service is interested in. It could be here the speed, the estimated range, um, let's say tire pressure data, automated data. So as soon as you choose these, we also see a breakdown of availability from different um, manufacturers. I'll go ahead and save that. And once you've saved it, you have a basic uh, setup. You can also see a, a breakdown from uh, different manufacturers uh, that are supported. So it's a, it's a good list already today. And um, you, these exactly what type of attributes that are needed for your service, of course, depends on uh, what you're looking to do with that data and what type of service you're offering to the car owner or the, or the fleet owner in the end. Now, when you have done this, there's also a certain inf part of information we request um, um, to get the, a link to the kind of privacy uh, policy that is used, terms and conditions that you have towards your customers so we can have a look and make sure that uh, it fulfills the different data protection requirements. And um, in the end, it's possible when filling this out to submit this data container for review. So this review is then, it's coming back to high mobility. We are, we are looking at what type of data you're interested in uh, of course, we usually have a conversation also to see what, if there's any specific manufacturer interested in or should all different manufacturers be enabled right away. Um, and we also make sure that, of course, the uh, terms and conditions um, have, been, have been accepted and signed. Um, and that usually takes not more than a day or two. Uh, and we activate this uh, data container, which means that you can start um, accessing data for that selection of data points that you have done. Now, as we are focused on personalized data, so every every kind of every piece of data basically that comes from fr through the high mobility platform is always attached to a specific VIN. Um, so again, the vehicle identification number. Uh, obviously, there's a need of consent or agreement from the vehicle owner, and that's also something that we handle through um, through APIs in, through our platforms. So as soon as we activate this data container, it's possible for you to start activating individual. VINs uh, through our APIs. And how that is done is by using different uh, certificates and authentication credentials. So we have a bunch of different ways to integrate. And um, one of the most popular today is really using our streaming interface. So we offer an MQTT interface uh, where, where we kind of push data all the time from all the different vehicles. It's also possible to use a traditional REST API or a GraphQL API. Um, iOS, Android SDK, or a Node.js SDK. So a wide, uh, option, wide range of options to can try out the data in the end. Uh, and you can get all of these credentials from here. Uh, this is just a test application, so no problem for me to show here, but here we can see different OAuth. Uh, we use OAuth for authorization, uh, so you can get the OAuth credentials from here. We have different client certificates to use with our APIs, and for MQTT, we have specific client certificates that are used for um, authentication. You can get all of this here. And in addition, it's possible to configure webhooks to get information about, uh, for instance, if a fleet clearance was changed, if authorization changed, 
uh, for any of the vehicles. Maybe the access was revoked by the vehicle owner, for instance, you can subscribe to these things, but also other type of things like location change, web hooks, and so on. So once this uh, data container has been approved, it, would, uh, it gets a green status, and then these uh, credentials that are listed here will start working. And by following our documentation that we have here in API guides for each one of these different integration methods, we have detailed um, documentation. You can really see how to use those credentials when using our API, and then how to start fetching data for any of those vehicles. Now to simplify um, things, we also offer uh, different sample applications. So of course you can start from scratch, read in the documentation and um, start using um, a REST API for, or maybe something like Postman to start easily. But we also offer different uh, uh, resources to do that. So if I go back here to the platform uh, to downloads and scroll down, I can see that we have here different types of sample applications that we offer for you to get started. Uh, one of them to highlight today would be the uh, GraphQL or like a vehicle dashboard that we offer. If we open it up, it's on GitHub. As all of our sample applications, it's with the MIT license. So you can just go ahead and take it as it is, modify it as you wish and start using it, uh, which is pretty popular from our existing customers. Um, and here to give you an idea of what it looks like, this is uh, how this sample application looks like when you deploy it, run it, configure it with your credentials you can already start getting data from your vehicles into this dashboard and it visualizes them in a, in a nice format. There are specific instructions how to use this sample app, but importantly, we have a one-click uh, button to deploy to Heroku. So just by clicking on this, it starts the um, a deployment procedure in Heroku. So here I'm already signed in. I can just give this application a name. I can choose a region if it's US or Europe and then go ahead and deploy the app. And it's just as simple as that. This deployment for this specific sample application takes something like uh, five to seven minutes, not too long. For the purpose of this uh, webinar though, our, this dev talk, I'm just, uh, I've just done it. And here I created it and I finished the deployment. It created the app, it built it and it deployed. And I can just go ahead and click view. And this is the same thing that you would see if you are deploying it from, from GitHub. It's a visual format to kind of select and um, configure it. So there's no need to start to work with configuration files. Obviously it's already deployed. Uh, you just have to follow these steps and enter the different credentials right here. So the things you need to know is first off, if it's a, if it's a driver or a fleet app, that's also differentiation we do in the authorization process. So if you're working on a service that is offered to individual vehicle owners, um, that would be a driver application. It also means that we have a consent flow that we offer from High Mobility, which is based on OAuth 2, uh, that takes the driver through a visual steps to grant consent. If you have a fleet application, it's a bit different because fleet owners might have thousands of vehicles. So there is no visual step-by-step -step through the consent procedure. We just offer an API directly. It's all in our documentation, how you can add vehicles using that API uh, and revoke vehicles. And as soon as you add one, we are activating that vehicle access and you will start getting that onto your streaming feed or you can use the REST API or any other interface to fetch the data for those vehicles. So depending if you choose driver or fleet, the configuration is a bit different. Um, but basically, um, if you go back to the data container from, uh, from before, here we go, live data. So this is the data container created. You can see here we have things like the different code snippets. Here we have for GraphQL. So you would copy it from here. Go in here, it says the GraphQL config and paste it, it's accepted. And then the OAuth credentials would also get it from your, um, here from your under the OAuth client tab. And you can just copy these different credentials into this and Go ahead and, and create that connection. So that's all you need to do to configure it. You can go ahead and get started. Once you've done this, you can start to add vehicles. Now, because I just created this data container, it's in a draft state. 
Um, they are, these uh, credentials are not released yet for actual data, but that's all you need to do. You activate this and then you can start adding real vehicles because this sample application takes care of the consent flow for you. It's already integrated into this application. And so you can start working with live data and try that out. So that's really a very short overview of how to get started. Of course, each one of these steps, we can go into very deep details and we're happy to do that um, in any of the next open dev talks. Uh, that we'll be having on a regular basis, but also in, in the direct one-on-one -on -one, uh, talks if you want to get in touch with us directly.